Good morning. In a previous video, we figured out how to get the components of the covariant derivative of a 0, 2 tensor. We figured out that component number alpha, beta, gamma of the covariant derivative is just the ordinary partial derivative. And then to take into account the fact that the basis vectors and basis one forms are not necessarily constant, we figured out that there would be additional terms involved. Before proceeding, I want to make just a few comments. If we're doing relativity, for instance, each index can take on four values, so there are going to be 64 of these G alpha beta semicolon gamma quantities to look at, also, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. These are the number of Christoffel symbols. These equations are very complicated looking, but they're not as bad as it could be. If I think of these as equations where the Christoffel symbols are the things that I don't know, these are linear equations. There's no square of a Christoffel symbol, or derivative of a Christoffel, or anything like that. Also, the metric tensor here is a symmetric tensor. G alpha beta is the same as G beta alpha. And lastly, we figured out that if we're using a coordinate basis, as described before, the Christoffel symbols are symmetric in the lower two indexes. So if you take this into account, there's not really 64 equations with 64 variables. There's only 40 equations with 40 variables. I'm going to write down that same equation again using indexes rho, mu, and the index of differentiation will be nu. This equation is true even if I used different letters for the indexes, so I'm going to write down two other equations. I'm going to write down this same equation, except I'm going to take rho and put it down on the end and have mu and nu instead. I'll do the relabeling of the indexes on the right-hand side so that it matches what it should match. And then I will do the same by rearranging the indexes again. So I can easily get a formula for g nu rho semicolon mu. And I can get a formula for g mu nu semicolon rho. It's important to understand that these three equations all say the same thing. If any one of them is true, then the other two are true also. The reason that we write things like this is by doing a very sneaky and clever combination of things, we can actually figure out what the Christoffel symbols are in terms of metric tensor components. What we're going to do is I'm going to add the first and second equations together and then I'm going to subtract the third one. Now, this is all going to be very complicated looking, but I'm just going to write these things down literally. There's no deep thought going on here. And simply writing in the components, this strange combination that we've got simplifies to this extremely messy looking situation here. It's not as bad as it looks though, Remember that the components of the metric, if I interchange their indexes, I get the same number back. Also, on the Christoffel symbols, if I interchange the indexes downstairs, the number is the same. We can take advantage of this fact. If you write in all of these contributions, you get the following horrific-looking expression but it's not as bad as it could be. Here, 
the metric tensor has indexes kappa and mu. Here it has indexes mu and kappa. G mu kappa and G kappa mu are the same number. Downstairs, this Christoffel symbol has nu and rho. Here it has rho and nu. Because of the symmetry downstairs for the Christoffel symbols, this term and this term end up canceling each other out. Let's see if anything else does. Here I have rho and mu downstairs on the Christoffel symbol, and the G has indexes kappa and nu, kappa being the upstairs index on the Christoffel. Let's go looking for something that looks like that. G kappa nu and G nu kappa are equal to each other. Lambda kappa rho mu and lambda kappa rho mu are literally the same thing. Even if the indexes were backwards, they would still be equal to each other. Those terms cancel each other out. So this combination of covariant derivative components equals the corresponding components when you use ordinary partial derivatives, minus that, minus that. If you look, though, g rho kappa, g kappa rho, gamma kappa nu mu, gamma kappa mu nu, these two terms are equal to each other, and both of them are being subtracted, so they don't cancel each other out. This quantity is this quantity minus two times that quantity. So after all of this work, our result simplifies down into this. A reasonable person is asking themselves, is this ever going to go anywhere? The answer is yes. One of the things we figured out was that the covariant derivative of the metric tensor is zero. So these terms over on the left-hand side are all zero. Zero plus zero minus zero is zero. In this newly simplified formula, the only place the Christoffel symbols show up is there. I'm going to add 2 g rho kappa gamma kappa mu nu to both sides, divide by 2, and we're about there. To get the Christoffel symbols in terms of the metric tensor and the components of the metric tensor, all we've got to do is somehow get rid of this g rho kappa. We have to be a little bit careful now. Kappa is an index of summation, so this is a sum of Christoffel symbols equaling something that we could calculate if we knew what the metric tensor was. If you'll remember, when we're talking about the metric tensor, I can think of its components as being a matrix. When I write the inverse matrix, I write the component indexes upstairs instead of downstairs. In this sum, kappa is not really there. It's an index of summation. The row is, though. I need to do something with the inverse matrix to get rid of g rho kappa. So what I'll do is, I'll multiply both sides of the equation by g rho sigma with the understanding that rho is now an index of summation also, so the rho isn't really there either. Because of the inverse matrix thing though, g rho sigma upstairs, g rho kappa downstairs is Kronecker delta sigma kappa Kronecker delta sigma kappa gamma kappa mu nu consists of a bunch of terms, 
all of which are zero except when kappa is equal to sigma. So the quantity over on the left hand side of this equation that we're looking at is actually just one of the Christoffel symbols. It's Christoffel symbol sigma mu nu. So believe it or not, we have solved that system of equations for 64 variables in terms of 64 equations, or 40 if we take advantage of the symmetry, by doing a whole bunch of weird index manipulation. It's important to remember something. We used the fact that the Christoffel symbols are symmetric in the lower two indexes in order to get this. So this is a good calculation if you are using a coordinate basis, a basis of the type we've been talking about. Otherwise, if you're not, then this is not necessarily the correct formula. We're going to stick to coordinate bases as much as we can. The punchline to all of this is if you give me a description of the metric in terms of the coordinates, then I can do derivatives, matrix, inverse type stuff, and figure out all these Christoffel symbols without ever thinking about Cartesian coordinates. That's important because the Christoffel symbols are the things that tell us the straightest paths in a space. We're very close to being able to talk about gravity a little bit. This is probably long enough for today. It's New Year's Day. I hope everyone has a good one. I'll talk to you again soon.